You know how it opens? Yeah. It was a small town by a small river and a small lake and a small northern part of a Midwest state. There wasn't so much wilderness around you, you couldn't see the town. But on the other hand, there wasn't so much town, you couldn't see and feel and touch and smell the wilderness. I first discovered Ray when I was 10 years old and uh, was in middle school. When October came around, I wanted to get to the ghost stories before all the other kids had cleaned them out. So I think it was the first, second week of October and I was walking the stacks in the library and I ran across this book. And as soon as I saw this cover, I was immediately intrigued and uh, thought, I gotta look into this. So uh, I checked it out, read through it inside of a day. So I decided I wanted to be a writer and I started writing short stories and poems and reading as much Bradbury as I could. Um, and then uh, when I was uh, 14, um, I wrote him a fan letter, just about the only fan letter I've ever written to anybody. He was always very generous to his fans. So he wrote back. He sent me this wonderful postcard saying it was one of the loveliest letters I've ever gotten. And he sent me a signed poster from the Walt Disney Something Wicked This Way Comes movie. It was just the most wonderful gift I've ever, I've ever gotten. I have it framed. I continued to read all the Bradbury I could find. Uh, and continued to be determined that I would be a writer. Um, when I got into my later teen years, I started to read other authors, become interested in history and philosophy. In college, I still wanted to be a novelist, but I realized I could not come up with a, uh, with a fictional plot more interesting than the history that I was learning. So I decided to become a writer of history instead. Uh, but I remained true to my love for Bradbury. And then when I was um, 27, I thought, you know what, it's been a long time since I've written Ray. I need to write him and tell him, you know, back when I was 14, I told you that you inspired me to be a writer. Well, I actually became a writer and, and I'm working on my first book. Um, so I wrote him and he wrote back and then we started this correspondence. So from the age of 27 to 37, uh, I sent him uh, letters, I sent him gifts on his birthday every year. Um, Ray did not like the internet, he didn't like email, but his, uh, his daughter Alexandra Z would, um, uh, he'd dictate emails, so he'd send me emails and I'd call him, particularly on his birthday. I actually recorded some of these conversations, uh, they're very, real treasures of mine. Um, and we kept this going for a while. Um, he. Uh, well, for instance, he sent me, since he knew that Halloween Tree was my, uh, my favorite, my first love, and it's still my favorite Bradbury story, uh, he did send me a uh, autographed and, and uh, doodled. So I have uh, a few books and, and letters that he, uh, he signed for me. I got to talk to him, got to exchange ideas with him, and maybe most important of all, like millions of people around the world, I got to read his stories and hold them dear to me. The wind stirred the great Halloween tree, which was now empty of all light save one pumpkin at the very top, a pumpkin with Mr. Moundtroud's eyes and face. At the top of the house, Mr. Moundtroud leaned out, took a breath, blew. His candle and his pumpkin head on the tree fluttered, died. Miraculously, smoke curled out of his own mouth. His nose, his ears, his eyes, as if his soul had been extinguished within his lungs at the very moment the sweet pumpkin gave up its incensed ghost. He sank down into his house. The roof trap door closed. The wind came by. It rocked all the dark smoking pumpkins on the vast and beautiful Halloween tree. The wind seized a thousand dark leaves and blew them away up over the sky and down over the earth.